My name is Jenny and I study a movement that all of you perform hundreds of times a day and that's reaching out to grasp an object. And unfortunately, when someone has a brain injury, an impairment in hand movement is one of the worst impairments in their quality of life. Today, what I'm going to show you is three pieces of evidence from my PhD studies that can be used to help people with living with this type of brain injury. So when you first reach out to grasp an object, you first look at the object and then as you reach out towards it, you gradually open and close your hand. This is called hand pre-shaping so that you can pick up the object essentially as soon as you touch it. Now the traditional model for how this beh behavior is performed is that visual information about the object comes into your brain, into the visual cortex, and then is projected forward along a visual motor gradient to the motor cortex. So it, the visual information is transformed into a motor command that can move your hand. Now the problem with this model is we all know that when you don't have vision, you can still move. So this is the question I addressed in my thesis, what happens when you take vision away? So the first thing that I did was I had participants come into the lab and I had them reach and grasp without vision. And what I found is that instead of hand pre-shaping, they actually dissociated the movement into two separate movements. A reach movement that reached out towards the target and touched it with an open hand, and then tactile feedback was used to shape and close the hand to grasp. So what this shows is that the reach and grasp are separate and can be mediated not only by vision, but also by tactile contact. The second thing I wanted to do was look at how this behavior develops. And what I found is that young infants act just like blindfolded adults in that they perform separate reach and grasp movements under tactile control. The third thing that I wanted to do was figure out how this behavior might have evolved. And what I did was I looked at a whole bunch of different animals. And yes, it's true that primates appear to be pretty unique in their ability to perform visually guided hand pre-shaping. But a whole bunch of other animals, like rodents, perform independent reach and grasp movements under tactile control suggesting that these movements are evolutionarily or phylogenetically older than visually guided hand pre-shaping. So what this suggests is a new model for how the brain puts movements together. What it suggests is that independent reach and grasp movements are established under tactile control, and then vision comes on later in evolutionary development and taps into these pre-existing reach and grasp circuits, allowing us to pre-shape our hand before we make contact with a target. So if you're trying to either repair a brain or build a new brain for something like a robot, what you need to do is you need to follow the same process that evolution and development followed when creating that brain in the first place. And so what that involves is taking these brain injured patients and instead of having them reach and grasp for visual objects, start out by retraining independent reach and grasp movements under tactile control and only once that is mastered, then allow them to have vision, bring vision back online so that they can integrate the reach and grasp together into a more complex behavior, which allows them to pre-shape the hand before they touch a visual target. Thank you.